out in and, and play around with it. And when I was in the archives um, at the Moore, I, spent a, I was really fortunate to spend a week down there playing with the photographs, just looking at them and thinking about the film. Um, the idea for this interactive came to, to give users a chance to dig down um, into, into the rich and incredible material that, um, that exists, uh, that we built the film out of. Um, and so that's where Jackie Mint comes in. Jackie um, built an incredible framework using HTML5. Uh, she's been coding for, I don't know, several months now, um, uh, building a beautiful, lush, very, in the end, very, very simple concept. Um, to go from the film down into the archives and there's a multitude of ways that you can actually experience the material. So I'm going to invite Jackie up now. Um, please give her a huge round of applause. For you. A bit of a tour of what, uh, just a small sample of what's available um, in, in the interactive. And the idea for this was really, um, we were also really inspired by tablets. Tablets are becoming um, more and more, com more people are using tablets to access the internet um, on it every day. And, and they're saying by 2015, uh, tablets will outship uh, laptops and, and desktops combined. So we're really interested in, in this new device, the tablet, and, and the new kinds of ways that you can experience material uh, content. I'm just loading up the site now. Not so very long ago, though the city of New York is still young. Some of the chapters are, are um, we call them the interactive chapters, and we've broken down the photographs and allow you to touch certain elements to uh, bring up additional context in text, um, but also in an audio form. And um, most of the more photos we try and offer you in the back, because the back that really inspired a lot of the film as well, it's, you know, just flipped to the back. Um, incredible, um, you know, what we call meta tags now in the interactive world, this was sort of meta tagging before the internet existed. All the information that tells, tells us what the photo was. It was really beautiful, uh, incredible facts. Not so very long ago, though the city of New York was still young, boom. running hot water, elevators, doormen, all of it was new. The first kind of apartment blocks started being built in New York and there were blocks like the Dakota, for example, were massive service blocks in the 1880s, but these were blocks that had modern conveniences in them as opposed to sort of like tenement building and all the utilitarian flats that had been built beforehand. So what Jackie is doing is she, you can play the film, you can scrub on the film, there's a timeline, you can scrub at any time, but you can also go down below and that's where the stacks are and you can go into this material. Running hot water, elevators, doormen, all of The Romans were the first to build early apartments. were the first to build early apartment living. Looking 
by mid-century, the state-funded high-rise was an iconic emblem of the period. Whereas in the 19th century, people's homes were seen as really private things. The big innovation of the 20th century was that shifted um, and governments began to see if they were to maintain legitimacy, they had to really intervene in how homes were provided for people. And mass housing is one of the main material legacies of that. Part two, which deals with the century of the high-rise, that's where a lot of the photographs from the morgue come from. And um, they're just phenomenal, um, phenomenal photographs. I don't know if Jeff Roth, the archivist, is here with us tonight. Um, but Jeff is, is uh, really the, um, the guardian of this collection now. He's the sole archivist uh, left to take care of these photographs, five to six million of them. And um, he was incredibly helpful in, in, in pulling the photographs and getting them scanned, not just the front, but the backs. And, and a funny story, when we first got the scans back, the first image, um, it was completely cropped and ready to go for the newspaper. And I was, I was looking at it thinking, it doesn't look like what I saw in the morgue. And then I realized all the markings were gone. Um, the scanners had gone in and photoshopped all those things out. And uh, you know that's, that works with the paper, but for a film, you want to see all that, all that detail of, of the hands that have touched this photograph to make the newspaper. So, so we had to go and rescan a whole bunch of photographs and, and keep them in their original format. By mid-century, the state-funded high-rise was an iconic emblem of the period. The invention of reinforcement, its early residential use on a Japanese island is expedient. In some chapters, we filled out the story by finding incredible collections of photographs by contemporary photographers, and this is one of, one of those. Its early residential use on a Japanese island is expedient. Mitsubishi builds these tower blocks. The Shangri-La of mass housing by some experts' accounts. Clearly, in lots of places, the condo towers are being built, but you know, my argument is that they're a different animal because then they're a commodity, they're not a, a sort of social thing. They're property speculation, driven. they're part of the mainstream of capitalism itself, really, as opposed to, say, somewhere like Hong Kong, it's state um, social provision. So the, the, the condo towers are something completely different. They're part of, like, image architecture. So in a way, they're kind of on the other side of the fence, ideologically. See if she can beat her high score. Housing <laughs> <laughs> by some experts' accounts. On a global scale, it's a dawning. You don't need trends. You don't need trend spotters to tell you, because it's not hard to see, that our world cities have made me one way to grow. New vertical urban future, only for the very rich or the very poor. The city ceases to be. Soco. 
been working in, since 1974 on housing conditions in Hong Kong. So we're really fortunate to have them share their collection with us. This is the very rich or the very poor, just give you the city ceases to be accessible to all. Um, this whole section came to me because we met very early on with the social media um, editor at the New York Times, Lexi, and um, she said, you know, why, how can we include the readers? We had an idea to, to have them submit the photographs, and we got over 2,000 um, so far, and out of that first um, uh, collection we, we built this film, and um, uh, Lexi and, and, and Deb, Deborah, is Deborah here somewhere? Hi, Deb. <laughs> um, Deborah did a wonderful job of, of pulling the, the stories that the, the readers wrote um, uh, that accompanied the photographs that we submitted. And um, the team will also be building a story wall, so it'll be a separate um, full feature uh, where you can look at all the photographs submitted and, and we'll also open up um, for users to, to submit more photographs. So that'll be a place you can see those. Those are really moving and um, Wonderful stories. It's one of my favorites. So that's a small taste of about 30 chapters or so that uh, that we built um, in the project. And um, should we do that? Sleep <laughs> um, as a um, as a as a gift to you all for for joining us on our premiere evening. Um, we wanted to give you a chance to explore part one on your own. So um, uh, if you want to take a picture of the screen, if you've got your cameras here, or if you want to write this down, uh, you're welcome to join us at newyorktimes.com slash highrise. Um, and this is the username and password, and you'll be able to access part one um, and all its chapters, um, on, best seen on tablet and computers. Um, on iPhones, you will, you will get the films, but not the, the interactive chapters. Um, and... Uh, this will open up in totality, I think, on Friday. I think the full, yes. the full site launches. Friday morning. Friday morning. <laughs> um, and please share with your friends and um, if, you, if you like it and if, if you want other people to see Heartland and what we're up to. So I think we're going to open it up now to Q&A. We're going to invite Eugene uh, to come.